The height of summer has passed and there's only a few short weeks before fall will be upon us. I'd be lying if I didn't say the growing season has been a disappointment so far. My vision for the garden has come alive and my skills and knowledge are better than ever. But you can't control the weather and the weather plays a huge role in crop production. You see, our mid-June and all of July was extremely hot and this caused for a lot of plants to drop their blooms. When this happens, the amount of fruit you get will become a lot lower, if any at all. That has shown to be true for the whole month of August. The amount of harvest I normally have during this time is overwhelming and this year, it's been far from it. Especially with doubling my growing space this year, I expected to be completely burnt out and I'm not. This month has truly brought me a deeper perspective on how fragile nature truly is and how fortunate I've been to live in a world of abundance thus far. I think of the ones who came before us and how if their crops didn't do well, it meant for a really tough winter trying to survive. It's been something that's been heavily on my mind lately as I feel the frustrations of this summer season. It really gives a bigger meaning to the saying, it's just a bad crop year. I really feel this deep. Growing food takes a lot of work and discipline and it can be very discouraging when things just don't go as planned. But there's still time to grow and I'm not giving up just yet. Okay, so today I am finally getting around to something I've wanted to do for years, which is make my own vanilla extract. So if you didn't know, you can make your own vanilla extract for a fraction of what store-bought would be. So for instance, I'm doing a pure organic vanilla extract today. So I have 25 organic Madagascar vanilla beans here, which smell phenomenal. This is my very first time ever buying vanilla beans, and I can smell it through the package. So I know once I open this, it's it's just going to be amazing. I have a handle here of organic vodka, but honestly, I could have done this just a little bit cheaper. I bought these super cute little five ounce little bottles that come in a 12 pack. I got this idea from Acre Homestead. If you don't follow her channel, I definitely suggest it. She has some really cool ideas, and when she was demonstrating her vanilla extract, she used these bottles, and they were absolutely adorable. So. I really liked them because they came with these super cute little shrink toppers, kind of like a wine bottle. Let me grab one here. Kind of like the tops like this. I thought this would be really cute because I want to gift half of these for Christmas. And you might be thinking, um, that's a little bit early thinking about Christmas, but that's one reason why I put this off for years, to be honest. I would forget until about October, and most vanilla extract from what I've gathered, most people suggest about three to six months before using. So right now, I think we're sitting like, what, three or four months before Christmas? I don't really know. I don't really want to think about it, but all I know is I am hitting the timing really close. So I'm really excited to be doing this today. Um, it's really simple and honestly I can't believe I've put it off for this long and I could get away with just making like a nice 32 ounce quart jar like from one of my uh, mason jars and it'd be just significantly cheaper. Um, but honestly uh, vanilla extract is super easy. I'm going to throw a few beans in once I slice them, top it with vodka and put the lids on and they're gonna go in my basement. I'll shake them every now and then and that's it.
am so excited about this. This turned out absolutely adorable. You can see some of the vanilla actually starting to float around now that I shook them up a little bit. But I was wondering if the amount I bought was enough and it was perfect. So I had a pack of 25 Madagascar beans and I did two per bottle. And then this whole handle of vodka was perfect. I actually didn't need any extra and I didn't have any to spare either. So it filled all 12 bottles up perfectly, which was something I was curious about. So if you are wanting to do this for yourself and you are just in love with these little bottles like I am, a whole handle was absolutely perfect. So I will make sure I link the vanilla beans and these bottles online um i bought them from amazon super easy and again i got this idea for the bottles from acre homestead so definitely go check her out but these are just they are so cute and this was so easy i love a good money saving kitchen hack that isn't time consuming because most of them are time consuming a good vanilla extract is going to cost you for a bottle smaller than this about 15 to 25 dollars depending on the brand so for the fact that i made this amount for $75, I am obsessed with. It only took me about 20 minutes. And again, you can make this for even cheaper if you didn't buy like the cute little bottles like I did. But I'm so excited to get this. I think this is so cute. Oh, this was, this was fun. Good morning guys, so I ran in to get a cup of coffee. Oh, and now I'm spilling it and wasting it. Okay, let's not do that. So I woke up this morning to mostly harvest my echinacea, my cone flower, because I'm going to be making a tincture with that later. I've also been drying a bunch of yarrow that I'm wanting to make a tincture with as well. But I did want to get out here and just do random harvesting. Honestly, I'm just so disappointed in the garden at the moment. I'm sure there's so many of you feeling this exact same way because if you had a lot of blossom drop in July, you're probably not getting a lot of harvest at the moment. Um, unfortunately, we were so hot in July that I've really noticed that the last week to two weeks, my harvest have been very minimal, especially for how much I should be getting this time of year. And honestly, it's kind of discouraging just because of previous years. I was telling my husband, we have like triple the amount of tomatoes planted this year and I only have probably a third of the amount that I put up in previous years. And it's not a feeding problem or anything like that, it's simply because blossoms fell off. Uh, so it's been very unfortunate. Obviously this trellis is doing really well. I'm starting to get these cute little honey nut squashes. I got two of them this morning. Um, so I'm really excited to try these. These are a hybrid variety, kind of like a butternut, but they are just a lot smaller. And honestly, so this morning I'm over here right now because yesterday I was searching through bugs through my entire garden and I noticed two batches of um, squash bugs hatching and I found a handful of leaves with eggs. So I've been dealing with squash bugs in this area now for I think the last three or four weeks and this is my first year that I've really dealt with squash bugs but this is the first year I've done any type of vining crops on this scale. I've been able to manage them quite well to be honest. Um, I haven't really had a problem because I've been able to catch most of the eggs before they hatch and I've just been throwing them. Um, I've had probably like roughly 15 adults but yesterday the two that were hatching I know I probably ended up missing a handful. I really want to make sure that I have no more eggs through here. I also have a bunch of dead foliage and stuff that I need to cut off this give it some airflow because these plants are going crazy so all of my cantaloupe especially I harvested all of my cantaloupe but this cantaloupe plant is just going crazy and I'm getting a second round I already have five I think five new cantaloupes on the plant so I'm getting a whole second wave this trellis over here has been honestly the one thing in the garden that's done really really well and it really shocks me because my trellis last year was the worst part of my garden so so I will say this year is different compared to previous years because I have not been using neem oil at all so the last four years previous to this year I have heavily relied on neem oil and this year I kind of did it out of pure laziness this garden's huge and to spray neem oil on it as often as I would have needed to 
would have just been a huge chore and watering's already kind of a chore so i didn't want to just add on so much more to my plate when it came to that and honestly i'm probably spending a lot less time hand picking off bugs so if i see a problem typically if you see an area of your garden where there's holes or you see caterpillar poop or whatever you can typically find the bug by picking off the bug i feel like it's just way more effective i feel like my plants are a lot healthier and i think going forward this is going to be the plan because i still have a good amount of beneficial bugs as well and neem will kind of mess with those i really didn't have that big of a problem in my garden uh but I mean, the one thing I will say I've had an issue with not spraying is wasp nest. But I think a lot of my hand picking for these squash have done it. I really don't see anything else that I could have possibly missed. Ah! I just found a June bug. See, this is why you do stuff like this spend extra time in the garden you find just you just find bugs okay let's see if i can get this june bug to the girls this is gonna be tricky oh i got him i got him oh ew, they move in your hand and it's so gross okay who wants the june bug who wants it you gotta get ready Oh, see, this, I mm, I jinx myself sometimes, guys, because guess what? I just found... Boom. This is another reason why I absolutely love growing vertically, because you can just spot these so fast. And there is a bunch of squash eggs that are now about to die. Goodbye. Sexy sock. All right, it looks like I need to spend more time in this trellis area. Because clearly, I'm not even thinking I found all the bugs. <gasps> ah! I found another baby squash bug. Let's see if I can get close enough to show you. All right. So that's what probably like a few day old squash bug looks like. And now you're about to die, sorry. Ah. I got the girls some sunflowers and let's check for eggs before going in. So today is my very first day ever making a tincture and honestly I'm so excited because this has been a goal of mine for like two years now. I've really been wanting to make this echinacea tincture and this yarrow tincture for some time and now it's come full circle. So I planted both of these in my garden this year in hopes that I would get enough of a harvest to be able to do that and I have so I'm really excited to do it. So I have all of my fresh echinacea that I harvested this morning then all of my dried yarrow that I've been harvesting throughout the weeks and drying throughout the last few weeks. I also have a bottle of Everclear here and a bottle of vodka, a few mason jars, a scale just to make sure I'm as accurate as possible. And then I also have these fermenting weights that I think will come in handy, uh, just keeping the plant matter underneath the alcohol just to make sure it extracts correctly. So the reason why I have Everclear and vodka is for an actual reason. So when it comes to the fresh matter and making a tincture, this has a lot more water content than something that's already dried. And with that, it could go bad a lot easier and that's where the higher alcohol comes in hand. And that's why I only need like a 40 proof when it comes to the yarrow here. So that's one reason why I have both here. There are also different ratios for both of these. With my Echinacea, I will be doing a one to two ratio. And what that simply means is one part fresh matter of the flower and two part weight of the Everclear. And when it comes to the yarrow, I'm doing a one to five ratio and that's just one part 
weight of the Yara to five parts of the vodka. So I will be doing that in my mason jars here. So I do have this book here uh, that I've been following. It's the Modern Herbal Dispensary. I will make sure I link it down below for you guys. I've always been kind of hesitant. Obviously, I've been wanting to do this for a few years, and this is the first time I'm ever making a tincture. And it's just because I think I finally got enough research under my belt where this just doesn't seem intimidating anymore. Honestly, it's actually pretty straightforward. So I I think this is going to be fairly easy. Uh, this book is really cool just because it just breaks everything down by what plant you have. And it tells you like what you can make with that plant as far as like a tincture goes or if you were to do like any type of like tea or bath or like salve. There's a lot of different cool things and it kind of just breaks everything down by plant. So I really like this. Um, I don't have any other guide to really compare that to, but I have found it very helpful. So I will make sure I link that for you guys. <laughs>